Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Environment Matters. I'm Greg Adolfson. Forty years ago, President Jimmy Carter signed the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act, which established regulations at the federal level to protect communities and the environment from the adverse effects of surface coal mining. SMACRA, as it's known for short, also provided states and tribes with funding mechanisms to address hazards and environmental impacts from mines abandoned prior to the Act's passage in 1977. The DEP's Jake Glantz joins us now with a look at some of the program successes here in West Virginia and at the work still to be done. Greg, over the last four decades, just over a billion dollars has been spent in West Virginia alone to address the safety hazards and environmental damage caused by more than a century of pre-law mining. Coal was first referenced in what is now West Virginia in 1742, when explorers reported seeing an outcrop along a tributary of the Kanawha River. It would take another 100 years or so before the demand for coal would bring mining at an industrial scale to West Virginia. First in the northern part of the state along the Pittsburgh seam, and then in the south as rail lines necessary to haul the coal to market were extended and encouraged development there. Large-scale surface mining in the state began in the early 20th century. SMACRA was enacted August 3, 1977, and prior to that, the coal mining that occurred in West Virginia happened with little to no requirements for reclamation. So SMACRA required coal operators to acquire permits and then meet a, a stricter reclamation uh, responsibility. But what SMACRA also did was provide the state with funds to go back and then reclaim mine sites that coal operators were allowed to uh, walk away from. And after 40 years of work in West Virginia that includes more than 4,800 different sites with a four and a half billion dollar price tag that still needs to be addressed. Of the four and a half billion dollars on our inventory, only one and a half billion dollars is, is approved by the Office of Surface Mining. Two billion dollars, um, or two billion dollars worth of work was removed by OSM in the late 80s or early 90s, and then there's another billion dollars worth of mine fires that OSM has just told us we can't include uh, because it would skew the, uh, the numbers too much. So with the uh, two billion dollars thrown out in the late 80s, uh, the reason for that was due to the fact that those sites were deemed too far removed from populated centers. So what's happened now, as, as um, the state has changed, people have been able to access some of these more uh, removed sites. And so what may have been a, a hard to access site you know, 20 years ago is now an easily accessible site, particularly with the um, development of the Hatfield-McCoy trail system. We have numerous high walls in southern West Virginia that may have been isolated and, and very um, infrequently visited, but now today, uh, with the number of visitors that utilize the Hatfield-McCoy trail system, that high wall portal or auger hole um, may see upwards of 50 to 100 people a week travel by that feature. With any reclamation project, the top priorities are the elimination of health and safety hazards. And then the secondary benefit is the environmental improvement that is seen through the reclamation. So, for example, within the Cheat watershed, uh, the AML program has spent a tremendous amount of time and resources abating and reclaiming physical features uh, to, to keep the public safe from those hazards, the open mine portals, the vertical openings, the high walls. But in reclaiming those sites, the, the large and, and very significant secondary benefit has been the environmental improvement associated with that reclamation. So back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, the Cheat Watershed and Cheat Lake were not nearly the fishery that they are today. Today, through the reclamation the AML program has done, as well as regulated mining in that area, uh, the Cheat uh, Watershed, including Cheat Lake, is one of the better fisheries in the state. So great, great success story there, and, and that can be attributed largely to the reclamation the AML program has done. West Virginia receives about $25 million a year for reclamation of abandoned mine lands from a per ton tax on mined coal. Those fee collections are scheduled to end in 2021. 
our program will receive the last uh, disbursement of those funds in 2022. After 2022, our programs will be able to utilize uh, what's known as the AML Trust Fund. The AML Trust Fund was established uh, when SMACRA was created to provide funding for states and tribes to continue doing reclamation after the fee collection stopped. So um, as, as long as the, the AML Trust Fund isn't utilized for any other type of programs, uh, they project that the AML program in West Virginia will continue to have funding through about 2035. However, there are a handful of uh, bills working their way through Congress right now that would potentially utilize the AML Trust Fund for other activities um, besides reclamation of AML features. Project costs range from tens of thousands of dollars to several million dollars with the bulk of the money spent on construction. Those larger projects are usually done in phases, spread out over several years. One project in particular in Tucker County, Tub Run High Wall, we've done three projects alone at that particular site and we're in, in the process of designing a fourth project at that location. When it's all said and done, we will have spent over $10 million at that particular site. So for us to tackle that site or a site of that magnitude in one year would, would basically direct too much of our funds into one area and would uh, reduce our ability to actually abate other hazards around the state. Because AML sites are dynamic, they're always changing, um, what might be a stable, low-priority site today after a freeze-thaw cycle or a rain event, um, you may, that site may become an emergency situation or a high-priority site that suddenly bumps uh, itself to the top of our reclamation list. The DEP's AML program also funds the construction of water lines in communities where the water source has been detrimentally impacted by pre-law mining and actively treats roughly 100 miles of acid mine drainage impaired streams across the state of West Virginia. For Environment Matters, I'm Jake Glantz. Thanks, Jake. Every year, the DEP's Office of Abandoned Mine Lands and Reclamation budgets $4 million to deal with emergencies like blowouts and landslides. It also puts up to 30% of its annual grant into a set-aside account. Interest earned from that account pays for treatment of acid mine drainage impacted streams. In 2017, the AML grant amounted to $23.8 million. 